Hi, Pegumisa. Hi, Masi. How are you? Very fine. Thank you. We good. are so honored to have you here. Karibu sana. I'm honored as well. I hope you had a good trip. Oh, Kenya is good. <laughs> <laughs> we Spend the night in a Kenyan home, so yeah. it was it was very very good. We literally didn't sleep. Yeah. Talking about the goodness of God and Amen. it was a good time. It's good so far. Amen. Sad I'm leaving today, but <laughs> you will I've had a good time, yeah. Okay, maybe we can start with you introducing yourself. I'm called Mosingo Begumisa. Uh, professionally, I'm an engineer, civil engineer. Uh, specializing in materials engineering for road construction but I'm also a father I'm a husband I'm a leader in society mm. <laughs> different spaces but most importantly I'm an author as well yes yeah so I've authored a book called in search of sanity uh, which talks about my journey living with um, a life-altering potentially life-altering uh, disorder condition called bipolar disorder and it gives hope about how if someone focuses on Christ, they can beat any mm -hmm. condition. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's the book I authored. Okay, you were yeah. telling us a little bit about that. As sure, well. sure. Um, it's <coughs> an award-winning book in Nakaba 2021. Uh, maybe I can ask, how did you feel receiving the news? It was a shock. <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, we had 70, 70 books plus. And I am called the night before. I, I think I even shed a tear. <laughs> I don't know that I don't know where that recording is, but yeah. I, I lost my words because yeah. uh, I didn't want to write the book mm -hmm. because mental health is, is, is a private thing, you know. It's a yeah. it's a family thing. It's Especially a in our society. In our society, it's yeah. a harsh thing. Mm -hmm. You know, this one is having depression, or this one is having a, a manic phase. Mm -hmm. They hide it. You don't talk. You don't talk. Who talks about mental health? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, having refused to write and eventually obeyed to write, and then the book is winning an award about six months later, mm -hmm. it was overwhelming for me. So wow. I, I thank God. Awesome. Yeah. Maybe you can take us through um, the journey. When did you start writing or when did you know you could write? And how did the call come? How did you write the book? Uh, okay, as, as a person, I love reading a lot. Yeah. And, uh, Which is a good thing. For it us. is. <laughs> it's yeah. refreshing because I read. Yeah. I read a book a month minimum. I already have my book for my books book list for 2022. So mm -hmm. I'm eating away slowly. Yeah. And um, I and I've studied a lot. I have a number of master's degrees. And so 2020, I want to do another master's. Mm -hmm. And my wife says, No, you cannot keep doing master's degrees. Where will you end? And so I said, okay, give me, give me permission to at least do a leadership course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I enrolled for a leadership course. And part of a deliverable for the leadership course was to write a book. Mm -hmm. Now, in my mind, I had already, I already had a manuscript because I keep scribbling stuff around. Mm -hmm. And I knew what I wanted to write about. Mm -hmm. So when I get an author, he tells me, no, 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 this won't cut it. Mm -hmm. Do you have a story? I panicked yeah. because this stuff that's deep seated. You I mean I just had the last, the last breakdown had been twelve years before that time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I said yes, I live with, I live with a condition called bipolar disorder. Have you ever heard of it? Mm -hmm. The guy broke down. Mm -hmm. So I crying in a restaurant. I said, what's up with you, man? Mm -hmm. He says, man, this is a very serious issue in society, and I know many people who are affected by it. Mm -hmm. Go and write about the, that stuff. So I get back into my castle. What did I tell this guy? <laughs> and now I'm pondering about what to write. Yeah. The months are going. Yeah. And Christ impresses it upon my heart to actually write a book. Yeah. He told me, man, they need me. That's what he kept on saying. Mm -hmm. They need me. I said, who? The people with mental health disorders. I told him, no. Mm -hmm. They've got psychiatrists. They've got, <laughs> they've got doctors. This, mm -hmm. this is not my space. I'm an engineer. <laughs> Leave me alone. Yeah. I mean, that's how I talk with God. We, yeah. It's conversational. It's relationship, you know. Mm -hmm. And he budgeted me. The more he budgeted me, the more I got more tensed up. And the more I withdrew. But I couldn't withdraw from the one I love. So I kept on going to pray. Mm -hmm. And it became more and more. The journey took about almost six months yeah. 
of rebellion. <laughs> yeah, and he said, okay, if you can't write for them, yeah. write for me. Yeah. Write for my sake. Mm. That, that just crushed me. So mm. I, uh, I told him, I said, you know what? I am going to literally die. <laughs> this death. Yeah. <laughs> I am going to literally die mm. so I can give you glory. Yeah. And got an audit, edit, same guy. I went back to him six months later. I told him, I'm ready to write. And I, so I said, this is a painful thing. Do it in a very short period. So we got a target of 2,000 words a day. Mm. So I'd wake up at 4 a.m. Yeah. every morning. We're targeting 40,000 words and cry from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. <laughs> it was painful stuff, man. Wow. I mean, relieving, walking naked on the streets, yeah. in mental hospitals, mm. those jabs, the injections, and the medication. Mm. Stuff, stuff, you know. Mm. I literally died, guys. <laughs> mm. It was, it was that tough. But I mean, after after writing for about uh, a given period, I called the editor and told him I can't write this stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. I can't. Why? Why am I sacrificing? He says, I know. I was waiting for this call. Mm. So I said, No, let's utilize it. And I remove myself. After all, I have young girls, I have a wife, mm. I have my in-laws. They didn't know anything about it. He says, no, when we get you out of the picture, it will be fiction. Mm. The book will die. The story will die. Yeah. And I got back, got myself together, and wrote until the manuscript took, took uh, shape. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's the journey. Wow. Yeah, that's the journey. So. Wow, I can even anticipate now the challenges, because I want you to tell us the challenges you went through, but you um, already mentioned some. How, mm. how was it? What are the challenges you had to scale? Um, in your <clears throat> I think the the challenges first were internal, the, the decision, making the decision to write that big, big, big. And then uh, you anyone who gets a copy of the book will realize that mental health doesn't come because you're predominantly genetically predisposed as a person, mm -hmm. family background and stuff. You see, normally this stuff runs in families. You, you yeah. can stretch your... Uh, research big enough. Yeah, so mine was brought about by my uh, conflicts, persistent conflicts and marital issues between my parents as a sensitive child. Mm -hmm. So when my mom decided to leave the home, yeah. I said, what? We've struggled all these years. It's the mm -hmm. first year university. Mm -hmm. And you're leaving? So you're about 20? I'm about 20. 2000, 2000, I'm 20, exactly 20 years. Yeah. In the spirit, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I, how can you live now? She says, No, yeah. I'm going. What are you going to? Your parents are dead. Mm. Stay in. Mm. She packed her stuff and went. Mm. I remember very well, I stood by the gate of the university hall and wept like a child in case we were walking around and I said, What's up, this guy? Yeah. Well, I don't even know when I stopped crying. So I went upstairs in the room, I slept and woke up a different person. Mm. The, the string broke at that time. So mm. uh, for mental health. And, and do you have uh, other <coughs> siblings, older, younger? Yes, I do. I'm, I'm the middle child. Yeah. I have two before me, two after me. Okay. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's genetically predisposed because all of them, same blood genomes, <laughs> yeah. but the same situations, but they yeah. made it yes. <laughs> without any breakdowns, yeah. you see. So, mm. uh, so the first challenge for the family was, you've disrespected your dad. Mm -hmm. How do you put this stuff in, in public for everyone to see? Yeah. I said, guys, relax. Mm -hmm. The man is 70 years old. I honor him. Mm -hmm. He's my friend. We forgave each other. We, we are best buddies. He, mm -hmm. he stays at my place even when he comes from education. Mm -hmm. How about my girls? <laughs> yeah. They are young. Mm -hmm. they, have, they may be bullied. How about my wife? Mm -hmm. You see, eh? Yeah. I said, no, realign your alignment. Forget about the old man and his disrespect and character. Mm -hmm. There's nothing disrespectful about him in the book. Mm -hmm. I'm building a story yeah. about how mental, mental issues start up in families or in people. Mm -hmm. You'll see, even if it's a traumatic experience, even if it's a rape, even if it's a drunkard, a substance abuse, it doesn't come overnight. It yeah. slowly grows up, gradually grows up until it erupts. Mm -hmm. That was the second challenge, perception by society. Mm -hmm. so, what's wrong with him? He's going to lose all his work. How do you write this stuff in public? But I said, mm -hmm. man, the guy, the Lord who sent me will 
to work out a work in me. Um, the book came out. Uh, the other big challenge was getting it to the stores. I remember I went to this store and uh, this, the lady told me, we don't write, we don't publish, we don't sell such kind of material. <laughs> you go away. <laughs> went away, walked practically to all the bookshops in Kampala. All of them were te taking, except that one. But up to now, I don't think, I mean, this is now almost a year, a year next month. Mm -hmm. I don't think they've sold uh, even 50% of the copies I gave them. And uh, that was a challenge. So, you, but I left the books there. So sometimes someone can ask, "Where do we find the book?" And it's you can, uh, you can say there. send them there. Yeah, but the sales, say, mm. uh, the bookshops are for visibility, mm. uh, not mm. per se sales, mm. because now we have to work to get the traffic yes. in these bookshops. Mm. But you're doing well. So yeah. So I mean, then I now went on one to one, mm. one on one, yeah. and uh, that's how I have sold a very big number of books. It's very surprising. I mean, when I talk about when you talk to authors, yeah. it's a record sale because people say you can't sell a thousand books in six months. Yeah. It's not normal, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think because I wrote the book at a time when there was need, yeah. there was need. People were jumping from cliffs. People were yeah. depressed yeah. and needed some it's, it's some encouragement. Pandemic. pandemic. People are very stressed. They've lost their Anxious, jobs. lost jobs. Yeah. And then you see this guy telling you, "I almost committed suicide." Mm. But I'm alive and I'm yeah. working well. Yeah. Hey, there's this hope, man. Yeah. Let me go through this. I'll hang on. Yeah. yeah so those those were the major challenges, really. Yeah. Wow. Um, <clears throat> I hope that people listening or watching will be very encouraged to grab a copy. In they the should. Book. It's a good <laughs> book. <laughs> so, what is your <clears throat> highlight moment? The moment uh, or moments mm. where you're just like, oh, wow, this is really amazing. You know, I'll give maybe a few on yes. either end because one on the side of guys, and men and women who are uh, struggling with mental health disorders who found encouragement. And then on the other side, ordinary people mm -hmm. who have no mental issues who've grabbed hold of a copy and cannot let go of it mm -hmm. because of the content that gives encouragement. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, uh, I've written the book, I'm done with the book, I'm looking for someone to do the book cover. Yeah. And uh, when I'm looking, I have a graphics guy who does the company's um, uh, brochures and yeah. profiles. Yeah. He's a Muslim man, former Muslim man. Mm. Now I call the guy up and say, are you in town? He says, yes. Now when I called him, I said, no, this is God's book. How, Jesus' book, how can you give a cover to a Muslim man to do God's, God's, God's work and yeah. stuff like that? So I hesitated to call him in. But I drive to office, get to the office, and by coincidence, he's within the area. He just decided to come. I tell him, man, I just said, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. I say, man, I have a manuscript of a book. I said, what did you write about? Mm -hmm. He says, I, I told him I wrote about bipolar. He says, you're bipolar? What, what are you talking about? I said, yes, I am. The guy started crying. Mm -hmm. I said, my what's up, my what's up, my man? Mm -hmm. And he told me about how his elder brother had disappeared, just one day disappeared because he, he got a mental disorder. Mm -hmm. He never got over it as a family. Yeah. The beauty is, is, is that I told him, okay, let me just read for you the last chapter because the last chapter is about the authority of Jesus against any mental disorder. By the time I go to the last point of the book he told me man I need you Jesus it's a Muslim man confessed Jesus Christ right there yeah. did the cover it's a beautiful cover it's 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 a it's it's a bitter I don't know it's, it has a it has a thunder you know and because the thunder shows the confusion and the disturbance in the mind of a mentally disabled person mm -hmm. and then below it is a calm sea Shows I mean, you can be disturbed and <laughs> crazy, yeah. but God can give you that calmness of mind, that mm -hmm. peace of mind that surpasses human understanding. Yeah. So yeah. he did the cover. <laughs> He's a born again guy. I gave him a Bible the other day. We are, we are walking the journey of discipleship. It's one of them. Uh, I'll give you again, we two, two more. Two yeah. more. Just. <laughs> there are many. There are many. Yeah. There are many. Yeah. Uh, the second one is a 
guy is going, going to be my friend, mm-hmm. not related to mental health at all. He's in the middle of the lockdown. He's at the, one of the big hospitals in Kampala, mm-hmm. Nakasero Hospital. Mm-hmm. He calls me. I've never seen the guy. Yeah. He calls me, hello, sir. I got your contact. I'm holding your book. Mm-hmm. My fiancé has just got a miscarriage. Mm-hmm. Hey, what's up? Mm-hmm. I'm holding on to this book because if you went through that stuff and you are still standing, I can make it. Mm-hmm. Can I meet you? I said, no, we can't drive, we can't. So we somehow got an arrangement, and I could drive because I had an engineer's uh, ticket or something like that, yeah. and he was nearby. So yeah. we got into a certain place. I talked to him, and talking to him changed his life. Mm-hmm. I gave him a better perspective of the story behind and mm-hmm. the Jesus I believe in. Mm-hmm. He's a guy who had been a Christian at campus, main CU. I mean, Christian Union, but had backslid day and going around the world and stuff. Yeah. He recommitted wow. to his relationship with Christ. Amen. And he's, we walk, he's a mentoring him. Mm. I, he's an engineer, incidentally. So, mm. yes, that, the last one, I'm not, there are many, 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 yes, many stories. Let's yes, just yes, give yes, the last one. One more, yeah. <laughs> one more is uh, there's a gentleman. Because I've been serialized in East African newspaper, I monitor New Vision and the other papers. And this guy read an article in the Monitor newspaper mm-hmm. and did his background check, looked for the editor online, got his contact. Mm-hmm. And somehow the editor called me and said, you, Can I give out your contact? Yes, mm-hmm. please do. But the guy, Come and find five minutes. Because hey, what's not SOS, what's up? Mm-hmm. Call up the guy. The guy says, My name is Paul. I'm a second year student, first class, but I'm addicted to drugs. Mm-hmm. I've tried to let go of the drugs, but I can't. Mm-hmm. But your story seems to encourage me. Mm-hmm. Can I meet you? I said, oh, I can't meet you. <laughs> in, I stay inside of Namugongo side in Kampala. I stay on Ntebe Road. It's, mm-hmm. It was a stretch yeah. for the lockdown. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I thought we can just do some calls. So I mentor him. I took first call, just pleasantries. I said, get let them get a big longer time. Talk to him for an hour at the time. With my 30 minutes into the call, he says, I want your Jesus, man. I want your Jesus. So I, I quickly use opportunity, man. <laughs> yeah, so I, I told him about the salvation journey and how he should confess. And he, he says, I am ready. He led I led him to Jesus Christ and started a new journey, man. He cut off his dreads. He, mm. He's a good guy. We are working together, Paul. Mm. And many, many. For the, for the guys who are <clears throat> mentally, uh, who have mental challenges, I have a couple of guys I, I give calls to every, <clears throat> every week. They, I've scheduled them because they can become too much. But just one, just one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so this particular guy that misdiagnosed his condition. But for some reason, he got to trust me. He'd never told anyone mm-hmm. that, for example, he was hearing voices. Yeah. He says, man, the voices are many. When I go down, I hear people telling me to do things. Mm-hmm. When I'm in the house, man, the voices are many. What do I do? Mm-hmm. Now, quickly, because I'd been in the mental health circles, I knew that's schizophrenia, man. Mm-hmm. They had given him another diagnosis. I think it was mm-hmm. uh, epileptic something. Mm-hmm. I was taking the wrong medication. Mm-hmm. I said, no, I called the mom, the elderly lady. She says, no, please take the guy to the nearest clinic, change it to this drug. Mm. Don't, don't tell the, the doctor, because I'm not a doctor, but I think this drug will help. Mm. So they went to the doctor. The doctor, when they explained, the doctor prescribed the same drug. Mm. I'd, uh, I'd like say they can yeah. use. The guy's better. Wow. You get, the guy's better. Mm. Not yet 100% full throttle, mm. but it's better so we book has been such an encouragement so I, I mean I thank God that I obeyed <laughs> to write the book because it's, it's, it's like a, uh, a breath of fresh air for lack of a better That's word true. yeah mm-hmm. and in just in that Jesus could see all these people and mm-hmm. more that are mm-hmm. still coming 
ideas like I need you to write so mm. that you can have a connection. Mm. And, and there are many others who have actually read the book. If you've done like a thousand, mm. then that means maybe a thousand people who have read the book but they've not uh, reached out mm. to you for feedback. Mm. But their lives are being Change. changed. The good thing is that actually you, someone gets a book the wife reads it. The sister of the wife reads it. Yeah, so it's so actually, it's about more than a thousand people have read the book. Yes, yeah. yes. I get random calls every now and then. And you know, a society is a bit skewed. They, they love to associate with success. Yeah. You see, yeah. well, I have the level of success on different angles, business mm -hmm. and, and the like, for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. But... Um, I got Rotary Clubs and uh, mm. every community wanted me to give a talk and mm. to encourage. It was good. It was a blessing. Yeah. Mm. But I wanted to backtrack and say that <clears throat> all things work for good yeah. for those who are the called and mm. love Christ and are called according for his purpose. Uh, because back then, <laughs> well, I got born again at, at 11, 11 years of age, mm. and I walked a straight life. Mm. I was the darling of everyone and you know. Yeah. And the thing hits at 20, I've not messed up at all. Mm. I ask my what's wrong with you? Mm. Will you tell me where this has come from? Yeah. What do I have to do as a star student at, at work, at school? Mm. I can't understand the simplest mathematical expression yeah. in engineering. Yeah. So I'm a shadow of my former self. Mm. Now, I didn't know lying on the floors of Botavica, naked and lost the mental hospital, that, for example, I'll be doing this interview. Yes. He works yeah. behind the scenes. You yeah. do not know what he's doing now. Yeah. I mean, if, he's, if you've given him your life as Lord and Savior, hold on. Mm. Hold on. Mm. Even in those tears, hold on, you know, yeah. because he's doing something behind the scenes that will shock yeah. the waves for you. I, I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> I tell people, I, I, the time I was too fat, too, saliva drooling through my... I couldn't write. Mm. I couldn't write. I'd lost my ability to write because I was under very heavy medication. Yeah. And then you look at me then and now. Yeah. It's good. He's good. Amen. God is good. Amen. And yeah. you <clears throat> use your situation to be able to minister and to give encouragement to so many people. Mm. And our prayer is that the book will even reach more people mm. and just be able to change um, you know, their lives bring draw people to Christ, mm. uh, which is an amazing thing because even the fact that you've led three people to Christ mm. um, and many more, you know, mm. that you know, read the book and they're like, I, I have a chance, mm. I have a chance. And the fact that now you're successful mm. and you are in this situation <clears throat> gives hope to this mm. person that you know what, even if I'm in this very terrible situation. Mm. I can become successful, you know, well I can said. achieve all the things that well I said. want to achieve. <clears throat> wow. Last question. Mm. A word of encouragement to um, <clears throat> someone struggling with either obeying the call or mm. even discouraged mm. <clears throat> that the book has not done so mm. well as they thought. Mm. What <clears throat> would you tell them? Uh, two things, maybe three. Yeah. One is obedience. Yeah. This, there's power in obedience, mm -hmm. you see. And you know many authors, if, I mean, you've been in the writing business for long enough to know that some people are discouraged about writing or mm -hmm. they kept feeling the unction to write and were putting it off. Mm -hmm. Obey. Mm -hmm. If the Lord is telling you to write, mm -hmm. obey. There's value you can add. I mean, we are, I mean, 8 billion people on the planet plus. Mm -hmm. Even if you reach out one person yeah. with your word of encouragement, mm -hmm. it makes all that difference. I normally marvel at the, the gentleman or the preacher who led Billy Graham to Christ. Yes, yes. One man I woke up on a Sunday. Just one person. One. <laughs> he would have gone <clears throat> home and said, man, I've done so I'm much lost. work for mm, nothing. nothing. Yeah, just or I'm not, I'm not good enough or I've yeah. lost it. The discouragement. One man, mm. you get a man gifted and he reaches millions upon millions of mm. people over a career of half a century. Mm. Powerful stuff. Yeah. So heed the call. Be yeah. obedient. Yeah. The second thing to fellow authors is try as much as possible to connect 
feed from the spirit of God, feed from mm. the author of life. So that you do not write your own stuff, your own impressions, and <laughs> the stuff that impresses you, and yeah. or what will sell, or what will sell, yes. what will sell, what will sell the latest yeah. fashion. No, mm. people want authenticity. Mm. They want real because yeah. guys go through issues, yeah. even those that did not publicize. Yeah. yeah. So they need to connect. I mean, so if it's a book about marriage and you're talking about marriage conflict resolution, mm. talk about the deep things. The deep, don't just slash the deep things under the carpet yeah. and you brush, brush. Yeah. yeah. So write things that are, when you laid, connect. Mm. Because at the end of the day, we are vessels. Mm. That's why I tell people, we are vessels. Mm. Yeah, the, I mean, the, God says, I'll build my church mm. and the gates of hell shall not over, overcome it. Mm. So if, if you struggle too much to cause change and it's in your power, you're going to walk out drained mm. and tired. Yeah. But if you know that you're a vessel, through which God can use to reach one, two, three people. It doesn't matter. Connect. Mm -hmm. Connect to Christ. And then, <clears throat> I mean, the last encouragement is do not fall for discouragement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so because certain times the books that make the most impact in life, you've read about the Tom Sawyers and those books that formed civilizations, mm. times past, where books, a guy writes it and is too discouraged about it and throws it away in the manuscript for, mm. for like five years. Yeah. And then more one Monday he says, but I wrote about this thing. Mm. He picks up the thing and it sells a million copies. Yeah. Changes narrative of life situations in, yeah. in the particular generation they are in. Yeah. Do yeah. not be discouraged. Yeah, yeah so Get in there. I mean, I got discouraged writing my man more than once. Yeah. Throw away the manuscript, pick it up again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Bible even talks about a righteous man falling more than seven times, yeah. right? And get up. get up again, get yeah. up. If the dream is big enough, yeah. you're connected. You have obeyed the call of God upon your life to write. Yeah. Get up again and again yeah. and write for his glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> awesome stuff. Oh, good. <laughs> Actually, just uh, encourage that um, you know people like Paul didn't even know he was writing a third of the New Testament. You know, just doing these letters. Mm. God says, um, write to Timothy, write to Ephesians, write to Corinthians. He's just he's just obeying. Mm. And then two two million years later, two thousand years, years later, later, we are here. We are reading these letters, letters. that are actually so impactful. Mm. Um, they are so connecting and because he was getting that inspiration from God, mm -hmm. actually the, the ones make sense to us now as they made sense to people who are in a mm -hmm. very low civilization. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't have maybe electricity, they didn't have cars and the planes that we have, but the ones are still relevant. Relevant. So we have to write, we have to be obedient to write.